thing to solder. Mm -hmm. It's not um, a fine line. Okay. Um, how big a wire is the con connector for the capacitors there? Number 10. Number 10. That's gauge 10 wire? It's only like a sixteenth inch or so. That's fine, right? Wait. Yeah. No, gauge ten. Um, yeah, that's like household wires. It's a gauge ten. Yeah, gauge ten is about household. That's like heavy uh, house. Household wire is usually fourteen. Yeah, fourteen and twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a little thicker. Yeah, no, that's fine to solder I'd say now okay. what kind of power of um, soldering iron would you need like a hundred watts yeah hundred watts should be fine mm-hmm sounds good yeah um, I'm on page two of the place where you're on page six okay mm-hmm Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Um, background, I'm going to make that reddish for this day. Mm -hmm. This would be like session five or so. Yeah. Um, okay, that sounds great. Do you have a, let's see, a circuit that you're working on that you're up, up, lading, up updating? No, I'm doing all this in MathCAD. MathCAD. Is that open source? No. What's MathCAD that? MathCAD is Computer a software. really wonderful mathematics program. And I do all my calculations in it. Uh huh. Um, but it's very, it's very expensive. It's um, $1,500. What's the closest to, to that in open source? Nothing close. Hmm. It gets you all kinds of uh, what's the it's areas. Like an, hmm. It's like an electronic sheet of paper that does um, math for you. Mm -hmm. um, an example is if you enter an integral sign, it does calculus for you. Uh huh. Okay. Be like Mathematica. Um, it's more user friendly than Mathematica, but it's of the same nature. It'll do symbolic math like Mathematica. Mm-hmm. Nobody's working on this kind of a program in open source. I am. But uh, you're actually writing some code for that. Excellent. Um, it's um, not yet ready for prime time. Wow. Um, it's a big program. It's around 100,000 lines of uh, C++. Wow. Plus plus. That's your contribution to the open source? Mm -hmm. Yes. Have, have you told anyone about it? No. Wow. First I've told. Wow. This is history in the making. Contrib contributing to the open source. Love it. Okay. That's great. But it, it'll be um, probably a couple of years. It can do a lot of math, but not everything yet. And I expect it'll be two or three years before it's um, ready to go. Oh, wow. Are you spending a, a lot of time on that, or is that like a little side project? or? I spend uh, about a day a week on it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Excellent. What What are you up to most of the days these days? What am I doing? Mm-hmm. Well, recently I've been working on your stuff. Yeah. Quite heavily. Excellent. Hmm. Oh, wow. Um, talking about that and tracking that effort, um, 
What would you say on average is that, is that, that you're putting in per week on that? Oh, 50 hours. Wow. Wow, it's all that work in the background there. Hmm. Wow, that's that's awesome. That's like, and that kind of, if we were paying for that, that would be like, what do people charge for your level of expertise on that? Like, 100? Oh, okay. I usually, the last time I worked, I got 80, 85,000. Uh, 85,000 for what? How much? A year. A year. So like, um, what is it, like 100 bucks an hour? Around that. Mm-hmm. So the, the contribution value here, that's 50 hours times 100. Man, we're getting $5,000 a week. This is awesome. That's about right. Thanks, Paul. Sure. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Um, um, well, we're talking about time. Yeah. Um, my uh, guess as to how long it would take to go from the current state mm -hmm. to an actual working welder. Mm-hmm. A prototype that still had things wrong with it, but was could well, as long as you treated it carefully, mm -hmm. would be a year. One year? Mm -hmm. Wow. At this rate of development, like pretty much full time? Yeah. Wow. How, um, is that how long it takes to... I mean... To do something of this nature, because I mean, what the difficult part is that we're starting from scratch in a different way of doing it. Um, I'm reusing as much stuff as I possibly can. Hmm. Um, when I did the substation tester, the transmission line tester which would be about this complexity. It was a two-year project, and that was for a five-kilowatt power supply that was programmable. And the welder is simpler than that, but not much. And when I did the welders, each one of them took around a year. What about those ones? I mean, is that how much it takes... Not for those ones that, like, the cheap welders from China, is, they don't take that much to design, right? Or or is it similar? They probably do. Take about a year. Would it be similar for a thing like a, like a plasma cutter? Or? Pardon? Just say that again, I missed it. Would it be a similar amount of time for... <clears throat> the plasma cutter or or induction furnace or after we have this basis it will be quicker to add in a different function it will be much quicker because we're creating a whole operating system here right yes mm -hmm. so the the challenge is going to be the integration so you've got the brain and because we're using this particular brain figure out how it all works but once we can control one device we can much more quickly control other kinds of power devices yes yeah mm -hmm. it's it's a lot about kind of like the compatibility of parts and kind of like figuring things out it's a tremendous amount of interaction mm -hmm. <clears throat> hmm. and um the next time around like say for for an um, induction furnace I mean the interaction but you have by that time you will have worked out a lot of the uh, various effects that happen yes mm -hmm. how long would you expect that if we have the welder completed how long would it take to do the, the induction furnace at that point not answering your question I think it would take to do a plasma cutter it would be six to eight months I think an induction furnace would be more. I think an induction furnace would be um, nearly a year. Hmm. Hmm. So, is the time 
to appreciate the time it takes to do this, even a simpler, like a much simpler system that does not have the universal brain, would there be much simplification possible there or, or not so much? Not so much. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's mostly, it's a high power level. And when you have high power, um, very small glitches in things, very small spikes in current tend to cause explosions. So I have to factor in the fact that I'll ruin it several times. And it takes a while to recover after you and it blow up on you. And recover is, um, is it most of that physical damage or is that psychological damage? It's most of physical damage. And then you have to understand why it blew up. Mm hmm. It's understanding why it blew up. Yeah. That you take after it blows up, it takes about a month to get ready for another test. To the first blow up, how much time is there from this point? Six months. Mm -hmm. But the good part is once we have this at the, um, you know, say we have the 10 kilowatt level eventually, when we talk about, um, are we talking about the 5, five kilowatt level for the first prototype that will take a year or that includes upgrading to the higher power level? I'm like hoping three. it's the 10 kilowatt version. Whole thing for, and starting with about 3 kilowatts or so? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The good part being that once we have one, then we can scale it uh, relatively infinitely up to how much, how big a welding gun we can have. Five. Five ten kilowatt devices. Fifty kilowatts, and that's. Do they make guns that big? No. That's all. That would be all custom made. Yeah. Does anyone use that kind of a power of welder? No. What's the largest that people use? Like twenty. Um. Thirty. The 10 kilowatt is 400. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit less than 400, about 350 to 380. When they weld pipe, like seam pipe, what kind of power do they use there? I don't know. What's the heaviest welding application? Is it like structural frames? Right. So, uh, 
Thunder Dam is pretty well it. Pretty well it. What do you mean by that? For, uh, um, I was looking at the East Ab welding tables, and they only go up to 600 amps. Yeah. And on one pass, what's what's um, with 600 amps? You can do one inch with one pass, or? Mm-hmm. Okay. It depends on what kind of gas you're using. Yeah. Yep. Is there a way that um, when when a design of a project like this is made, what are ways that people can parallel? Like if 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 you had another expert who, with your level of knowledge, uh, how easy is it to collaborate and and spread some tasks among different people? If if there are any other experts that uh, power electronics people that we may run into in the future, is there a way that to have uh, some of the power electronics people to talk to? It'd be great. Mm hmm. And can, basically, that would um, what what's the most useful part? Just the conceptual design, or like really knocking out, kind of working out which parts really work. Kind of like refining everything. Um, making sure that my math that I've done to calculate is, is right. Aha, uh -huh, math. And and which part? Which part is the math? Like, I mean, so you've got values of of components. You're calculating the components very specifically. Uh huh. Yes. And the the quest there is you don't want to make something too big because you're just wasting money on components that you don't need um, there's a lot of components that need to be a particular value as opposed to any other value smaller or bigger oh right 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things, if, if the math is not right, that's blow-ups? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and then, so MathCAD is, uh, are there other softwares that, that do those kinds of calculations, or? MathCAD is usually it, although you could use Mathematica. It could be done in Mathematica. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um... Let's see. Which which part specifically are you on right now that you need some calculations for? I'm doing the Max PowerPoint Tracker. Max PowerPoint Tracker? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant to say the Power Factor Corrector. Power Factor Corrector. Something else. Mm -hmm. And for that, I mean, that's... If you take off a, a, a reference design, I mean, there's a lot of things that are different. I'm using a reference design mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. But I um, I find that um, scaling a reference design to 10 kilowatts is quite an interesting exercise. Uh -huh. The reference design is how much? 300 watts. <laughs> um, is it that you can't find, like, they're not, the higher power versions are not open source? Um, nobody's published a design. I have one 
vaguely similar design that's at the 5 kilowatt level and another that's at the 50 kilowatt level. So I'm using those to cross-check my work. Uh -huh. They're different though. They're not the same. So there's still uh, lots of room for error. Yeah. Uh, do you have a link to, to one of these designs, Power Factor Corrector? So 10 gauge wire and the capacitors, math cat to do the calculations. So we're getting into some heavy calculations that we're working with. Um, I guess just like for anything we do mechanically, to really understand the system, you got to go through some numbers when you're pushing the limits. So that, uh, well, in our case, a lot of times we overblow systems, overbuild things. Um, I guess in the power electronics case, you have to have specific values. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I was just talking, yeah, yeah, I was kind of talking to myself here about um, the difficulty and um, like compared to our mechanical design where a lot of cases we we overbuild things, we have more power than we need. Um, it appears that it's different with power electronics where some things have to be at the right frequency or right power, right resonance or whatever. Um, so you, it's much... It appears that point of difficulty is uh, that specificity in when when working with electronic designs, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, did you find a, a reference design? SLU 746? SLUA 746. UA 746, yeah. Interleaved power uh, factor connect correction microchip.com. Um, web seminar. There's a seminar. Introduction to power factor correction. Apply voltage, resulting current. There's a difference in phase and in phase between current and voltage. I don't think you're on SLU A seven four six. <sighs> no. Okay, let's go back to that. Um SLUA746, okay. TI.com? Yes. For high power converters. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And what they say about it? They have um, in higher power factor, higher power applications, fully utilized line power factor correction is a necessity. Is it always that at high power the the things go out of phase? Yes. Um, and and low, lower power doesn't happen? Um, in the EU, um, you have to power factor correct anything greater than 75 watts. Mm -hmm. And that will probably be changed to 50 watts shortly. Mm-hmm.
two phase boost converter so voltage in single stage boost converter so you got an inductor you got this what's the was it a Zener diode what? Schottky diode. Schottky diode. Um, so that simple system. I'm not sure I understand what it is. Okay, so two phase. And how do you. Um, two phase, let's see. Two boost converters in parallel operating 180 out of phase. Uh, do you have to break up the input current? You break uh, it up? Yes. Although you do that in a very natural way. Mm -hmm. Meaning you just split it. Um, what actually happens is um, each of these things is a post-slip modulator, a boost post-slip modulator, a boost converter. Mm -hmm. And as a boost converter, they have an on time and an off time. And you just merely arrange it so that when one phase turns on, the other one turns off. Mm -hmm. The result of that is that when you're half phased up, so that you're on half the time, the other one is also on half the time. So the current ripple is zero, which means the stress on the capacitors is zero, which is where normally that would be maximum stress on the capacitors. Oh, wow. On the capacitor within, um, within the power, power factor, factor correction? correction. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting. Inductor ripple current. So the, uh, the that point, that output capacitor only has to filter the inductor ripple current. Is that the concept there? Mm -hmm. So let's see. So in this entire system, what what is the kind of uh, quantity that you're trying to figure out? Um, let's see. Dual interleaved. There's a further dual interleaved in this paper. Three or four. The challenge on the on a power factor correction right now is, um, I mean, does the circuit get to be compared to the reference design that we have in the paper? It's much more complicated. Like, how many components does it have? Um, oh, roughly speaking, twenty-five, thirty. Mm-hmm. And so, for example, have you done these power factor correct corrections in other cases? Yes, right. Yes, I have. I've never done a two-phase one, no. Uh huh. Was it that the one phase was sufficient for the applications you were doing before? Yeah, it was at the three kilowatt level. Mm hmm. Two and a half to three kilowatt. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. In anyway, our... each phase is carrying five kilowatts. Yeah. Yeah. If um, if we're talking about a, a welder that's smaller, like like scaling down our work, I mean it's going to work at lower power, of course, right? Yep. Um, and does is a very a much lower power system? It's just that much more easier to make, or 
or is it also quite complicated? To go from a theoretical design to a real working board, mm -hmm. there's a world of difference. Yeah. And a difference is what, like tweaking components or like adding components? Um, the physical layout of the board, um, although it looks like a fairly primitive design, device, um, switch mode power supplies are very, very critical about how the printed circuit board is laid out, how these components are relative to each other. You have very high frequency circulating yeah. currents. And unless you treat them as very high frequency circulating currents, mm -hmm. it blows up. Yeah, yeah. Um. So getting the physical design of it huh. is um, quite difficult. Yeah. And in the simulations, I mean, are you actually accounting for the path length differences? Is that simulatable or it's really by trial and error? Um, it just needs a lot of analysis. You can analyze the lengths of paths? Yes. Uh-huh. So that's yeah, that's pretty fine, fine tuning, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty challenging. And every board, like when someone designs one design or another, I mean, they always go through that. Uh, yes. Huh. So there's no easy way, like even. I mean, of course, but it would be easier at lower power, like, you know, we say working with, you know, like Harbor Freight has this one kilowatt or 1 1.5 kilowatt, uh, 120 volt um, inverter welder. So that, that kind of, at that kind of level, that's still a significant development time? Yes. Mm hmm Yeah. How much is that? The thing is like 300 or so. Um, I can't, I can't touch the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta make these tools, so. It appears that, um, we were thinking here, I mean, this is off the power electronics topic, but hand tools, 3D printed, like a universal construction set for hand tools. I think that's somewhat low-hanging low fruit in the world of open source in that that would allow lifetime design on, on small tools which are throwaway these days. Even if you get a good brand, it's you know you still throw it away because you can't really repair it. So with this 3D printing and your open source small tools, I think that's a I think that's an incredibly powerful project, I, I'm kind of surprised that no, nobody's really taken that on yet. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's another another conversation. But in which case, the, I mean, there's really no power electronics there. It's like pretty much on and off and, and speed control. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. There's power electronics in stepper motor drives. Yep. Um... Would you expect this device to also handle um, stepper motor drive? I mean, that past me again. Are we thinking that the same device, I mean, this brain could definitely um, control stepper motors, right? Yes, it would be a good stepper motor driver or a three phase induction motor driver. Um. For low power, like you know, say you do a you know a torch table, which doesn't have too big a motor, like you know, 400 inch ounce kind of s scale. 
Um, would that be practical with a system? I mean, it's is I our system you overkill? Too or? much for that. You can do a much simpler right. drive at low power mm -hmm. in the yeah. 400, 500 watt range. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, so you're, do you have, like when you're analyzing this, the power factor correction, are you still doing a circuit within KiCad? Yeah, um, within KiCad, yeah. Um, I'm not there yet, though. So you're still working out on paper, like the conceptually, you just, uh, you're pretty much drawing it on, out on paper? Mm -hmm. MathCAD. MathCAD allows you to do the actual drawings? No. Just the calculations? Yeah. I'm still doing calculations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you keep that in a notebook? Yeah. Is that shareable in some way? Can you, like, uh, post that or in any way? Or? MathCAD only runs under Windows. Can you bootleg some screenshots? <laughs> um, just a sec. Um, yeah, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, do you want one? I yeah. can send you one. Yeah, yeah, please do. I'll have to put the phone down. Give me a sec. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Paul. I, I need to get going today because we're we're gonna finish those panels tonight. Um, okay. But would you mind just uh, sending that through email? Sure. Yeah, I can take a look at that. Um, I'll keep my eyes out for any power electronics people. And um, sure. is what what level of skill do they have to have? Like, would um, would any graduate, uh, graduate level? Graduate level. So. It, is is someone who has no no experience building these things like who hasn't built a welder power supply would they be useful? Um, if they understand um, math, then yes. If they understand the the calculation side. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and and the prime, can you give me a feeling for like the main kind of calculation that you're working on right now is is what like is it related to frequencies or or like phases like phase angles or um i just finished doing the phase angle design for the feedback system that's in it mm -hmm. so you have to understand complex math mm -hmm. with phase yeah. angles and complex numbers yeah mm-hmm Yeah. Um, is there a, um, the principle of how, like, for example, that paper you pointed me to, uh, does it discuss the phase angles at the level that you're calculating that? Or, like, is basically the design rationale in there kind of for, for the process of calculating things? Or no, it doesn't look like it. Um, does it? I'll give you another reference number, SLUA479B. Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, a design um, for a 300 watt um, like, uh, corrector. Mm -hmm. It discusses this, these topics there? That does that paper discuss the phase angle rationale? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yep, it looks like it has a little more math in there.
um, and a chip that they're using, let's see, prototype daughter board control schematic. The chip that they're using is something, prototype daughter board controller. Yeah. So when they, for example, show their traces there, the geometry is very important. Yeah. Yes. And I think so a lot less, although like nothing like what their uh, layout is. Right. It's going to be more parts, much more parts. Bigger. Physically much bigger. Physically much bigger, but also more complication in terms of parts. Not terribly. Not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, if I find anybody that understands this paper, I'll send them your way. Sure. Yeah. Let's see. Do I, I, might, I might think about it. Let's see if this... I don't know anybody offhand, but there might be some people that we can rope in. That'll be good, because cause we got to, yeah, yeah. If we're going to open source this thing. Uh, this could potentially be a design that, I mean, are we thinking, like, in terms of sourceability of parts and, like, long-term evolution of this? Do you yeah. think it will live for a long time, like decades yeah. or centuries? Do you think it'll live, like, a century or not really? I have no idea, but... Uh -huh. But for decades, in terms of the kind of the parts that are available and the principles, the best practices yeah. that are used. Mm -hmm. Okay, are they coming out with any new like like leap, like breakthrough technologies in these areas, or this is all same old, same old? Maybe just better components here and there. Um, it's advancing slowly. And primarily, what in the speed and clean cleanliness of. Of turn on and turn off of power components. In power, the progress is quite slow. It's paced by the development of better MOSFETs and better IGVTs. Mm -hmm. Meaning, like less leakage. Um, more power handling ca capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So, the important thing would be if you know, roping people in is that okay? We're designing something that that can um, can have a significant impact on people's access to this. So. That's a motivation. How would you describe the value of, of what we're trying to do? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, what's the biggest point of value of developing an open source uh, controller system for power electronics? The concept that it's, I mean, just the, the, the essence of open source, which is flexibility, understandability, transparency, lifetime design, all these kinds of things, participation. Mm -hmm. All of those things. All of those things. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So, um... Anything else, Paul, that you'd like to share right now, or that's all. That's all for this week, and yeah. So let's let's set up. A, can we talk next week, same time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, is this um, like in terms of um, you know what you're getting out of this yourself? I mean, is this is this um, what kind of experience is it for you? I mean, it seems like a lot of hard work. Um, is this rewarding for you, or? Are you trying to work on the 
open source version of MathCAD because you're seeing that you need this in this kind of application? Like you're actually developing some of the capacity to analyze this as you go along? Um, or not? I not? felt the world needed an open source math program. Mm -hmm. A visual math program. It has, there is one called, um, um, I forget the name just now. But there is one, but it's not very um, user friendly. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of into user friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's... Do you see any of that, um, what you're developing being being used? I mean, definitely down the road for for applications like this, these circuits that we're developing, right? But, but not at this time yet, because it's a little behind in development mm -hmm. to what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You're programming a graphical interface as you go along, or right now it's all that's going to be later. I'm doing the graphical interface as it goes along. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. When would you be able to show show me something that you have in there? Like, um, is that going to be some time? Have you got any any screenshots or anything that you can share on that or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind sending that, if you can capture a screenshot and email that. That'll be good. Okay, I'll send you a screenshot of a fragment of the MathCAD program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> Okay. Great. We'll have to take a look at that. Okay, so um, so let's um, let's talk again next uh, Wednesday at okay. five p.m. Okay, Paul. Well, thank you so much for doing the work, and we'll You're talk. Welcome. We'll talk next week. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.